Welcome back. Gold closed above 1300 U.S. for the first time today, and some refer to the bullion as the world's fourth currency after the greenback, euro, and yen. Its recent rise has marked the steady erosion in the value of the U.S. dollar. By contrast, our next guest thinks that our loonie will soar to $1.15 by the end of 2011, and as the greenback's days as the world's dominant currency are numbered. Patricia Croft is Chief Economist for RBC Global Asset Management. Great to have you here. Thank you. So $1.15, uh, driven mostly by weakness in the U.S. dollars, that just well, kind of partly, a seesaw? Yes, and in terms of $1.15, I figure go big or go home, right? You might as well make a call that's kind of out of consensus. Yeah. But it's a number of factors. I think that a year from now, the outlook for the world economy will be a lot clearer. And it's a story of fire and ice. I'm a bull on China. I think China is going to surprise everybody with how strong they grow. But the ice is Ireland, Greece of the world. Yeah, they're down and out. Yeah. But the world economy is still growing. And I think as it begins to be clearer that that's the case, the Canadian dollar's fortunes are tied to that outlook. So that'll help improve as well. In addition to that, I think right now investors are looking for yield, but they're also looking for stability. And I think Canada is a bastion of stability. Yeah, we have our fiscal challenges. I think they're entirely manageable. Bill Gross, amongst others, of course, is saying if you have to buy sovereign debt, one country to buy is Canada. Yep. Those inflows will also add to the currency. But the third factor, you're right, is a long-term secular decline in the value of the U.S. dollar. Interesting you should say that because I was just doing some research this week on the different valuations of indices all around the world. And I find, for the first time in my life, the Canadian TSX is the most expensive index on earth. That's right. 2.7% yield, 18.8 times future earnings. Why put more money to work there when our GDP growth is actually sub 3% and I can buy an Asian index that's trading at 13p that's growing at 9% GDP? Right, but I think it's all about the fact that a country's stock market is not necessarily a country's economy. So yeah, we're going to have modest growth in Canada and every G7 country for a foreseeable future. But the TSX, what have we got? We've got financials. We've got a banking system. We never had to bail a bank out, let alone nationalize one. We're full of energy, full of materials. And gold, gold is 13% of the TSX. I think it's going to 25% of the TSX. So that story, I think, is very positive, And I think the Canadian market deserves that premium multiple. Patricia, at $1.15, uh, some of those beleaguered manufacturers yeah. who have adjusted to life at 95, 96, 97 will feel the pain again. Uh, how, how damaging would that be to parts of our economy? Well, it certainly would be. And I have to say, one of the disappointing stories about Canada is still 75% of our exports go to the United States and yeah. less than 2% or 3% go to China. Like, come on, we need to hitch uh, our cart to a different horse. But the fact of the matter is that at $1.15, yes, it's going to hurt, but this is part of a longer term process. And I've been very pleased pleased at the fact that most Canadian manufacturers have kind of got their head around this, that this is the new normal, for lack of a better term, that parity or something higher is where we're likely to be for a long period of time. So they are getting on with business. Now, you're retiring tomorrow as an economist, yes. I understand. And I, I mark that many of the uh, uh, economists of your genre have also done the same. What happens to economists? They go to a different place? They open a bed and breakfast? <laughs> Gosh, get involved I hope in politics? Not. Yeah, I hope not. But uh, it's been, I've been an economist for 30 years, and what an incredible run it's been, especially these last five years. I mean, they've been horrendous for investors. But as an economist, these have been fascinating and humbling times because we basically have to throw out the old rules of thumb and try and uh, learn and adapt new ones. So for me personally, I'm not sure where we go from here. I'm going to sit back and, and take stock, for at least initially. But I have to think it's going to be something related to the financial markets because it just kind of gets in your blood. It's a fascinating area to work in, and, and I've been fortunate to have a great position to be able to comment on trying to take that big picture and synthesize it down to what it means to investors, and maybe I can apply that in some other way. One thing that we do see some economists do when they're too young to retire, as you are clearly, <laughs> uh, is they go to the hedge fund side. They actually start managing money. Does that appeal to you? Oh, after? no. Nope. Not whatsoever. <laughs> not, not, <laughs> none whatsoever. No, no. I wouldn't even begin to think about going down that road. I'm much no, no. more well, hang on here. Many, many money management firms, Commenting. and I have O'Leary funds, we have a pet economist. We trot them out for large clients. Yes. Do and you it's become a very pet? lucrative... Do you have a pet? Offer? Yeah. Well, no, but th listen, it's I'm become very a very, very lucrative <laughs> career for many economists that have moved into that side. They've yes. done very... I can think of a few that come on this show. Yes. Very lucrative. On the hedge fund side. Yeah, give me yeah, your card. Well, that's a possibility, but like I said, I'm expensive. I'm not yeah, sure you can Before you go to work for Kevin, you talk to me, Patricia, <laughs> please. Uh, okay. I do want a to bidding ask you, war. On a serious note, um, <laughs> in terms of where the Canadian economy is going, uh, that dollar fifteen. what happens if the U.S. really does crater? We don't know, of course. What's your expectation for what's going to happen there and what it'll do to us? Well, I'm still saying no double dip. I'm going to take on Rubini. I think that the odds of a double dip are less than 10%. The economy has momentum. 
double dips are very rare historically. They require one of two things, a policy mistake, that's still a chance, or a shock to the system. And yeah. the last guest talked about possible shocks. We won't get into that. But I think that a double dip is not going to happen. The labor market is going to be very slow to heal, but it is recovering. That's important for profits. You do still have nominal GDP growth. Companies are flush with cash. A lot of the strength in that economy, I think, is going to come from capital spending, mm -hmm. not necessarily from the consumer. Great to have you here, Patricia. Thanks so much. And on the eve of your departure, but I hope that we will talk to you again on the other side. I of hope it. so too. Thank Patricia you. Patricia Koff, Chief Economist, RBC Global Asset Management.